this particular discussion is with regard to digital supervision and cyber security innovations before we move forward i'll request all the panelists one by one to please introduce themselves then we will further discuss on the topics please bharat Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for uh, very setting the right context. My name is Bharat Panchal. I work with Discover, but uh, my famous role was one of the co-founder of NPCI, and I was chief risk officer of uh, National Payment Corporation of India, and that's where the UPI is born. So that's uh, something great contribution to the nation. Tarun, sorry, please carry on. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Anand Tapikar, and uh, I am a director. Of Uh, cyber security in uh, GE Healthcare. Uh, in this panel, uh, I would like to learn and share my thoughts on a uh, uh, defense and uh, protection strategies. What uh, Mr. Astana has described as a very scary, and I agree. Uh, the mistakes are very costly in this field, and uh, we all need to be uh, vigilant uh, in this uh, in this field. And whatever I could uh, share, uh, I would like to share in this. Uh, Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Trishni Darora, founder and CEO of Tax Security, a vulnerability management company, homegrown in India. Uh, moved global a couple of years back. Uh, as Bharat uh, sir has said, the, uh, mentioned about UPI. So we are one of the uh, company protecting UPI uh, application that anybody is using here from uh, many years now. So yes, that's what we do. Hi, hi everyone. Good morning. So I am Tarun. I'm a co-founder of NFU. Uh, we use artificial intelligence and machine learning for national security. Uh, if you know about NIC, National Informatics Center, which provides uh, email to government of India to every employee in government of India, the cyber security of that platform is our solution. Our solutions are also running in ICICI Bank for loan fraud and analytics, and in multiple law enforcement agencies. For investigation and financial fraud investigation purposes. Okay, now since we have heard the panelists introducing themselves, we'll move forward. We have uh, divided this discussion into seven parts: key areas which requires uh, attention and discussion with regard to the cyber security and threat, and the innovations to deal with them. first area is to deal with the emerging technologies which we are using in the pfsi sector it is artificial intelligence machine learning internet of things big data analytics and blockchain mostly these technologies are being used so uh, we should know from the panelists that how these advanced technologies are working in the bfsi sector and i'll request uh, tarun to start with the discussion on this thank you thank you so much sir so from our experience you know bfsi sector and uh, law enforcement they go pretty much hand in hand they have a lot of data uh, when we talk about bank any bank for that matter even a cooperative bank right you have data in terms of millions of transactions every day you have data for loans you have data for credit cards debit cards and all these databases are lying in silos i believe sbi is one of the first banks in the country to go for a data lake to actually implement what we call an intelligence fusion center where you bring all your data from different databases into one big data repository you correlate everything and you get a 360 degree profile of every customer at a click of a button at this point of time what is happening is all these uh, banks they have different departments every department is maintaining its own database in silos so when they want to profile a customer they are only dependent upon one particular database they are not looking at the overall transactions overall data pertaining to that customer in every other database so big data analytics has come into vogue banking industry is embracing it when we talk about artificial intelligence essentially everybody here knows that ai is nothing but a mathematical model it's a play of numbers right essentially what you need to do is you need to get all your data into one place you need to convert it into 
some sort of a mechanism to make it statistical and then run the AI model from that. Banks like ICICI Bank uh, are already using artificial intelligence for loan fraud analytics. So today, as an individual, if I, if I apply for a loan to ICICI Bank, it actually goes through an automated mechanism where the system gives you a threat alert whether this individual should be given a loan or not. And last but not the least, uh, these three, I'm only talking about the projects that we have personally been involved in. I would let the rest of the panel discuss their experiences. But uh, last but not the least, AI is being used extensively for NPAs, you know, for early warning system for a non-performing asset. NPAs at one point of time were uh, a big problem area for the banks in India. Today, with artificial intelligence, with the capacity to process so much of data quickly, we are in a position to implement early warning systems, which can actually give you an advanced warning. Whether the loan that you have given to a particular corporate, or whether that loan will be returned or it will perform or it will become a non-performing asset. So these are the three areas that banking industry has been using, at least from my experience, that they have been using uh, AI and big data analytics extensively. I would let the rest of the panel share their experience. Rishneet, you can comment on the uh, this aspect of use of technology, modern technology in BFSI, and what is its effect on the operational efficiency of the sector? Of course. Before I begin about the BFSI uh, uh, sector, uh, cybersecurity need in the BFSI sector, I would like to and uh, I've also how we have seen Appy High uh, pitch today. I've done a lot of pitch in the past, never got a funding or never got a customer. I think that's the reason that I'm sitting here. So, but you never know when you become uh, so big and when Appy High becomes uh, Microsoft of uh, photo AI. So, and we are all looking to get hired there. So never throw them like that way that we did. Uh, it's it's not a wise uh, thing, uh, with, not with Appy High, but with any of the startup because startup is the backbone of India, not the large industries anymore, right? SMEs, MSMEs are the backbone which really generates a large employment. So we should, uh, you know, it's not about tax charity, it's about any startup. So we should uh, handle them with care and respect. Any of them can become uh, Google of India or SAP or Microsoft of India. So coming on this, uh, on uh, cybersecurity need in BFSI, cybersecurity uh, is, is a very broader term to be described, but any digitalization is, uh, the center point of digitalization is cybersecurity, right? So you can build anything uh, on digitalization, be it BFSI or uh, be it uh, technology, anything, the cyber security is needed, right? It's unsaid thing. And the best part about uh, the cyber security in India, the largely is used by the government or by the BFSI, right? Why? Because there is a regulatory involved. If there is no regulatory involved, nobody would even though care about cyber security also. It's a good thing. That's why we also exist. That's why the cybersecurity in India exists, right? The SaaS is a software as a service, security as a service. There is also CAS, compliance as a service, right? We'll come to that regulatory aspect and supervision. Sure. In a second uh, section of that, mm -hmm. which I'm going to take up. Second is this challenges and opportunities in digital supervision. Now the financial services are moving to the digital platform and simultaneously the regulatory authorities are also imposing a lot of restrictions and supervision over it. They also face a lot of challenges. So uh, Anand, can you throw some light on that with regard to the uh, uh, regulatory authorities and their how do they synchronize and sure. counter the threats? Sure. Uh, so security as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, is describing that security has a multiple facets now. So one, if you ask a person 
uh, his understanding of security is very different. For one guy, it's a compliance. For other guy, it's a regulation. The third guy, it could be a, a secure coding or how to build a secure application. The fourth guy, it could be a privacy. I mean, th I think there are eight, ten such different, different streams in the security. But in this uh, question, what you are asking about the regulatory aspects of a security, it is becoming very important. So I come from, I worked in BFSI earlier, but I come from healthcare industry right now. And in the healthcare industry, uh, there are multiple regulations. You must have heard of a HIPAA uh, regulation. You must have heard of FDA 510K regulations. Um, and there are many GDPR uh, in India also. We are coming PDP and many other things. So there are regulatory framework available for every industry. Uh, for the financial, we have a PCI, DSS, and many other regulation, RBI framework. So in this regulatory framework, that is what I describe is a very, very important to comply with, but that is a first step. What Dr. has described initially the example of a data breach of a, a biometric and other things that are the very, very scary thing. Just by complying the regulatory standard uh, will not be enough. You have to do a much, much more than that. And that, uh, that regulatory sensitive data or non-sensitive data, there are regulations that there are mechanisms available now to protect it. So I just like to... Sorry. Okay, thank you. Now this cyber security and uh, its uh, threat landscape is quite wide. A lot of things can be used to put the cyber space under threat. But so far as BFSI is a concern, mostly we come across ransomware attacks, data breaches, insider threats, and social engineering. Now, how innovation can be leveraged to proactively detect and respond to these threats, especially with reference to the insider? Bharat, i like you to throw some light on it. Thank you, sir. So, the BFSI sector especially in last uh, 15, 20 years, the largest innovation what we have seen that is into this particular sector. And uh, the way we are enjoying today, the digital moment, be it uh, banking, be it in a supply chain, be it healthcare or be it any other area. You know what, uh, we have gone a lot along with the technology innovation and technology has become so much so dynamic and there is no, there is no harm to you know adopt the technology as and when new things come but the delta between the technology innovation and the uses there was one part which was missed out how it is going to impact to the end user when technology is used in right right way then it's fine but when such innovation is used in wrong way like you know the people sitting in this room are having very very positive innovation for betterment of the society but at the same time what sir described about the innovation of jamdara gang which which gave me at least two sleepless night to figure it out that who did this particular scam with sir right and that they are also doing innovation you know uh, they they have you know their own school they have their own you know courses now they have gone much ahead and they have started online courses. I'm talking about the Jamtara game. So with all these things, you know, we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't thought about the security when we started way back in 2000. And what is the best example about security? Let me tell you about the IT Act 2000. Everybody must have heard about, uh, you know, this particular act. It does not talk about the cyber crime. There is no word even that. Today, entire our life is fully dependent on the internet and because of that so much of so cyber security threat have arisen now i i have led uh, you know the biggest of the biggest data breach in country like you know you must have heard about the cosmos bank and uh, you know hitachi payment system and many more what what was the common point into that it was not that they were not having tool they were not having technology they were not having you know the adequate manpower everything was there but it was a sense of alert that what can go wrong with the new uh, new age technology when you are deploying into the new surface. When it comes to you know uh, the kind of uh, 
cyber security landscape today the the cyber space every day get 1 million new malware new trojan no virus every day which is impossible for anybody to identify whether the new newborn babies are there in the market and even if you identified there is no vaccination how are you going to protect that that is where the innovation is needed now uh, look at uh, you know uh, let me give an example of the my favorite so you pay when we started there were 100 uh, 2000 uh, uh, transaction now it has gone to billion how are we going to manage the kind of you know the security challenges with this number of transaction and we must we must be aware about that there is no benchmark of what india is doing today nowhere in the world be it product be it value be it volume and in that challenging area how are you going to manage cyber security that's where innovation has played very very significant role in terms of using ai using you know the innovative model where you know Every, the transaction is completed in 200 seconds, 200 milliseconds, sorry. In 200 milliseconds, you have to see the transaction, you have to find out whether the transaction is genuine or fraudulent or suspicious. But accordingly, you have to alert to the bank proactively that this transaction has to be declined. This is just impossible task for manual process. And that's where innovation has played major, major role. But what is unique for our country? And that's that's always I, I keep on you know urging to the startup. I I happen to be one of the uh, co-founder of the the most successful startup of India that is NPCI, and it has changed the landscape of the way we are doing banking today. But your your innovation should keep not only India in mind. Please, not the India what being talked in political arena today, but India where only 20% people of us are living. We should think about. Bharat, where eighty percent of people are also there, they are not tax heavy. They are not having any. Bharat, I will cut short sure, this sir. thing because we are running short of time. Innovation is the key word yes. we all know. So innovation is must for data privacy and data protection both, because that is very sacrosanct. And in this area, innovation has to be very forthcoming and useful. I'll ask Trishneet because this customer trust is paramount in BFSI sector. Unless you earn the trust of the customer, you cannot progress. And for earning the trust, you'll have to tell the customer that your data is protected. Trishneet, how are the BFSI organizations using encryption and biometrics to safeguard sensitive customer data. I just mentioned about the biometrics. So that is very relevant. So please throw some light on that. I will not tell you how they're using it. Then Jamtara will find out the way to breach that also. So because it's confidential and uh, cyber security is, it's a confidential word itself, right? So, but I would uh, definitely tell, uh, as Bharat has, uh, Bhai has already mentioned about the innovation UPI, right? So UPI is the itself, uh, you know, speaks itself about the BFSI, uh, you know, about the country, right? It's a future of the payment worldwide, not in India, but worldwide, right? So uh, it's not limited to biometric or it's not limited to uh, data privacy, right? As uh, Anand has already mentioned, uh, for somebody, it's a secure code, somebody, it's a privacy, right? Somebody, it's a compliance, right? But end of the day, what we are trying to do is make the transaction safe in the BFSI. That's the end goal, right? And the customer data safe so that they can't use it adversely. So there are a lot of measures being taken care by the bank, right? Uh, one of the large bank in India, I think their cybersecurity budget is uh, as equivalent to the IT budget, right? So, but still, if you ask me, are they 100% secure? I would say that they are 1% secure. Why? Because 99% it's all over the attacks which will take the place, right? We should appreciate what NSA, uh, Mr. Deval has recently said at the BRICS is, uh, you know, we should lead as a country, as India on the cybersecurity front and talk cybersecurity separately from the BRICS, right? So just, I'll take one minute on this, right? So Australia has a cybersecurity ministry itself. Singapore has it, right? 
I think it's the right time for India to have a separate ministry on cyber security because that's the real thing for us to take it forward. Yeah, so over to you, please. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Now, <clears throat> with this, we move ahead to the point of collaboration. We cannot work in isolation. No industry can survive or progress in isolation. Similarly, so far as this particular topic is concerned, the BFSIs have to collaborate with various other financial institutions, technology providers, and regulatory, regulatory bodies in fostering a collective defense against this threat. I request uh, Mr. Anand to kindly enlighten us as to why this collaboration is essential for a robust cybersecurity framework and some examples if you can share on this count. Sure, thank you. So uh, I remember, I will not take a name, but the largest uh, retail supermarket in, in, uh, in US got attacked and the, the threat vector was found in one of the AC vendor uh, who has installed there and because of that the whole network of that particular uh, uh, supermarket got uh, hacked completely and the data got stolen of millions of customers so what what is important here is the securing the value chain or ecosystem here so if you are doing a business with the or banking uh, banks is not alone right you can protect the banks uh, you know the application you can protect, but you may be take, talking to the 10 different vendors and those vendors may be talking to 10 different other vendors. So it's a whole chain which needs to be secured. Then only the security can be achieved. Uh, it's not necessary that they are connected to the network of the bank or any other institute. They may be providing a data, they may be using the data or they may be processing the data. That's why if you see uh, nowadays the regulations which are coming up, uh, we talk about the uh, GDPR, talk about the HIPAA, talk about the FDA compliance. They all talk about that. How do you make sure that the all the all the points wherever the information assets are available, including the vendors, including the even if there is a large customer where you are dealing with. Those every places you need to have that security in place. So um, it's it's actually the terminology which is used a little technical is called as bomb technology, as bomb based software bill of material based. So every vendor whosoever is supplying to that data to you, you need to ask for the as bomb. And those using that as bomb, you yourself needs to build some kind of mechanism to check the vulnerability against it and make sure that those vendors held accountable for those vulnerability. It is a very, very risky thing uh, because for the customers. And it can happen to Mr. Astana, it can happen to any one of us. And the banking industry is most susceptible to this kind of attack and is very visible. In the healthcare industry also, there are attacks, but uh, they are not so much visible. But in this case, they are very, very visible and it impacts the person. So I feel the value chain needs to be completely secured. If I may add one yes, thing on, uh, on the collaboration part. See, uh, earlier days when uh, I'm talking about 2000 and before that, we used to do banking. So bank, your customer, your CBS, your ATM and your branch, it was completely closed loop. Today we are in the interoperable world. It is not only banking, but you know, your money is going to insurance and insurance is going into the stock market. Now, what is the biggest threat to the banking sector? It's not about the vulnerability in the banking application itself. But the guy who is getting the SIM card with a fake document and registering as a registered mobile number with uh, CBS. How that coordination is bringing down the all innovation in one particular sector and because of the lethargy to other sectors. So that's where the coordination is very, very important. And when, when data breach or any fraud or a cyber attack happen, it is not only on your bank on your only on your organization it is to across industry and you know there is a serious domino impact because of something so that's where collaboration bring a lot of value in today's uh, cyber uh, cyber attack uh, area so we have to fight it out collectively 
that is the essence of it moving forward what is the future of uh, digital supervision what we foresee on this i like uh, tarun to throw some light with regard to the technological innovations which you foresee and what should be done further that i have always believed that we should learn from history now if you look at the past few attacks which have taken place in the country which we are all aware of the aims attack it was in the headlines the hdfc data breach for loan people who had taken loans from hdfc that is all over the dark web uh the solar wind attack where indian army's critical data got leaked now there are two points you know if you if you look at all the commonality in those all three attacks one the response has been very slow it took us two and a half to three weeks to recover from the aims attack to recover the entire assets which had been encrypted using ransomware it took us two and a half three weeks to recover or recover that data or find out a solution to it right the other there was no impact analysis you know the organization themselves had no idea that okay the server got breached what is the actual impact analysis it was only when all that data went on to dark web and everybody started creating a hue and cry about it did organizations wake up and say okay we've lost so much of data so there was no impact analysis from uh, my thought process there are two things which are going to come into vogue in the bfsi sector which has to come into vogue one a forensics desk in every bank if you look at countries like saudi arabia saudi arabia has made it mandatory that every bank in the country will have to have a necessary forensic desk so in case a breach happens you immediately you you do a dfir digital forensic incident response you do cyber triaging figure out how the attack took place and cut off all necessary assets where the same attack vector is shown so we believe that a forensic desk will become mandatory in every bank in the bfsi sector and one very critical piece of technology which is you know nobody not a lot of organization in the country are using it data discovery you know today your uh, data is in you know aws servers you have data in maybe azure cloud in your own servers in your own laptops but you do not have a mechanism to figure out what data is lying where and what is the criticality of that data so data discovery as a software is going to become is has to become a necessity where as an organization you know at any point of time what data is lying where what is the classification of that data and you know if that particular asset gets breach what is the impact that can take place the same softwares are being used for compliance also these two technologies are already getting used across the world so we believe that in india we will probably wake up and start using the same technology sooner rather than later that's good and finally we come to the part of how to balance the innovation and security any thing which we do in extreme is not productive so there should be a fine balance between the innovation and the security i like uh, anand to comment on it and thereafter bharat to pitch in on this uh as as we are actually talking to startup community more here so innovation is the key and innovation uh, i always say that cyber security should not be the hindering factor for innovation at all I mean, it should be enable uh, for any kind of business so if we are doing the things in the cyber security which is hindering some very important business functionality then something is wrong somewhere that needs to be balanced it out and for that i'll take a one simple example uh, which i give uh, generally in panel discussion is that uh, when we go into the airline uh, and we go and uh, we just generally sleep we don't care about that how the plane is flying how the speed is uh, what is the mechanism of a motor i don't care any for anything else so cyber security should become that seamless integrated into the product and the product when the product is getting designed it should follow the methodology of sd3 what we call it secure in design secure in development and secure in deploy so digital monitoring also comes in the secure in deploy so that so that everything is taken care with the product delivery it should not be after thought it should not be abandoned then only the innovation and security can go together 
Anand, that is what exactly we, at least I have personally experienced when you, you see any of the product in banking today, be it, you know, right from UPI to IMPS to Rupee or Fastag or anything. What was the key ingredient of security was security by design. Security, quality and compliance cannot be an afterthought. It, it has to be inculcated right from the day when you think about the product. And that is what exactly, you know, I have personally seen in my, my career. But, you know, in today's era, I mean, when, uh, sorry to, you know, uh, no, not to target startup, but the don't target to a startup valuation than startup innovation. Because when you are running for startup, uh, you know, valuation, that's where the biggest problem is coming. Innovation is welcome. Innovation is necessary not at the cost of security for whatever you are doing. I think that is where the balance is very much important uh, to have. Thank you. And uh, Trishnit, you like to button? So, uh, yeah, startups has to, uh, you correctly said, startup has to focus on value, not valuation, right? Uh, it's very important what Anand has said to look into it, uh, that everything is in uh, innovation or technology should cyber security should not be a showstopper it should be enabler that is very much said right but we also have to look into cyber security as a need not as a uh, as a as a threat right we look at cyber security as a threat today if you ask sir uh, in innovation uh, is if you if a CIO asks money for innovation from a CFO, there is a there is definitely a value add to it. But if a CISO asks money to protect that innovation, there is no budget for it, right? So there is a there is there is a need uh, of shift uh, of a mindset, right? And build a right ecosystem. Right ecosystem can be built when there is a proper uh, understanding of the landscape of cyber security from not from not for a cfo but also at the board level also so that is only possible by quantifying the risk the language that uh, you know board understand which is a dollar value right so if the board understand a dollar value of a risk then i think they would wisely invest also right and they will also understand how much they have invested, how much dollar they have saved against that innovation, right? So innovation and cybersecurity is a parallel job, right? It's not, it's not a threat. Cybersecurity is not a threat to innovation. It should be enabler, as correctly Anand has said, sir. Okay, thank you very much. We have almost overshot the time which has been given to you. I'll just sum up uh, what we had discussed. Now, you see, innovation is must. We should not avoid it. And it is must, mandatory for all of us to survive and grow, particularly in this sector of BFSI. But as the panelists have said, security it should be embedded in the innovation. We should not avoid it. I'll end up by saying that when I joined the service, initial periods of my service, whenever we used to advise any industry people with regard to the security, which Trishnit has said the same thing they used to say, sir, investment in security is not productive. You don't get any returns out of it. That is the mindset which we are working with. We should avoid that because once the breach is there, then you can imagine what type of havoc can be created in your sector by this cyber breach. So please ensure that. And uh, I'll end up by saying, initially, we used to say that time, but now data is money. Please preserve it.